we are at the Texas Instruments here at Mobile World Congress 2012. And here you're showing off OMAP 5. What is this? Right, so this is the OMAP 5 SEVM, which has the OMAP 5430 device, which is the Texas Instruments' first 28 nanometer application processor, and, and also, uh, you know, the first with the Cortex A15. Uh, CPU core of, uh, of ARM Limited, and uh, we're really excited about it, and we're ready to uh, demo a, a bunch of the capabilities of this platform for all the users out there, you know, looking ahead to, to phones in the future. So, what we've got here is the, the OMAP 5 in, in, our docking, in our docking station, and um, what you'll see is then it also projected up on the up on the screen uh, at, on the HDMI, and what you're seeing right now is the SPB custom 3D UI working on top of Android ice cream sandwich, and um, you can see the very smooth, fluid uh, movement of those layers. That's thanks to the SDX 544 MP2 core, um, but you know also in our architecture. We have a unique composition engine that allows us to blend the multiple layers that are part of a UI and do it at one tenth of the power consumption of uh, the SGX core. So it's a it's a big power savings for large resolution, high re, uh, uh, high FPS fluid UIs. So you offload the SGX. Correct. On which part do you say? It, we call it our, our composition engine, and it's a, it's a dedicated uh, IP that allows us to, to blend multiple layers very efficiently. And you never did that before? So we introduced uh, the first generation of that in our OMAP 4470, which is also here on the floor. You can see some of the introductions. This is the next uh, generation uh, device, and it'll allow to take that massive power we're bringing with the MP2 uh, SGX core and offload it so that we're effectively able to do much more with the GPU and then do the composition in this very low power. Is it automatic that, uh, for example, ice cream sandwich will just be accelerated that way? Or do so, you need to change the software? Well, we, we, uh, implement, um, we implement policies in the hardware composer HAL of, uh, of Android in order to enable uh, a, a fluid transition between you know, this composition engine, the SPX, and actually our display subsystem, which has a, a, a very powerful uh, multi-pipe system to allow hardware uh, blend of uh, multiple layers as well. So, so we really have three uh, components that can really make an efficient blend. So the display subsystem is the one that works in outputting the video or outputting the... Correct. So the display subsystem uh, will take uh, you know up to four different streams and blend them and send it out to the HDMI. Now in the OMAP architecture we also have something called a write back pipe and that allows you to take the composited output, send it right back to the IVA HD video encoder and to do such things as uh, wireless display. So you can do in the OMAP 5430, it's a 1080p 60 machine. So you can be decoding 1080p 30 video and re-encoding the composited UI 1080p 30 and streaming it wirelessly with no additional memory transfer. So how did you upgrade that display system compared to OMAP 44? So um, both in raw performance in as far as uh, clock frequency and whatnot, but also uh, we've improved that right back pipe uh, to make it more efficient for things like wireless uh, display and whatnot, and to to really you know suit it towards the the, the multiple displays and the, the wider uh, resolutions that we see. So is this set up to demonstrate that you can use it more for uh, uh, what's called a computing use, like a desktop laptop use? You have like some Ethernet's and some crazy ports, right? So, so this um, this uh, this dock, as we call yeah. it, this is our SEVM dock. It's it's done there for uh, development and and also debug and trace. So you've got your you've got your full uh, your full D 
debug and, and, and whatnot right there. So, what are those ports? We have the power, we have the yeah. Ethernet port, then we have the HDMI and the USB, USB debug and the high speed USB debug. So you can be doing, you know, you can be doing development on this alone, or you can have it docked in the the cradle, have the keyboard, have the extra display ports, and, and everything else. So it's it's giving a lot of options to the user. And uh, what's going on in there? So this is for our, our debug port. So we can use this in our uh, product development to be testing power uh, from power and also JTAG and. Everything else. So, are those shipping? Yeah. The setup. So yes, we we've, we've started uh, production of that and, and working with some some lead uh, lead partners on uh, developing with OMAP five. It's going to be open to four developers to get access to this soon. So uh, we will have a, a open source development board. We haven't announced the official release date, but I would expect that in the second half of twelve to be uh, releasing an open source uh, development board with OMAP 5430. So what is memory bandwidth? Uh, so it's uh, you know dual channel, 32-bit uh, DDR at uh, 532 uh, megahertz. So it gives you 8.5 uh, gigabyte per second. So. 8.5 gigabyte per second? Is that close to 4470 or is it more? Uh, it's it's more. So uh, 4430 and 60 was 6.5 gigabyte per second. 4470 was up to approximately 7.5 gigabyte per second, and now this is 8.5 gigabyte per second. So, so. it's the absolute fastest memory bandwidth ever sh uh, demonstrated. Uh, it could it could well be. So I haven't gotten around to the rest of the floor yet today, but you know, in addition to just the raw memory speed. The, the OMAP architecture, both 4 and 5, have some pretty unique memory management capabilities um, to, to maximize the, the bandwidth. So you have, uh, first, our dual channel, uh, which we've had since OMAP 4, so being able to simultaneously access for two different channels. Every initiator in our system has a low latency path to, to those DDR, and it's fully interleaved, so you really effectively get the bandwidth of those two, uh, of, you know, memories. So we also have some interesting things, some a, a block called the Tyler, which allows for uh, virtually free rotation. Usually rotation is a fairly bandwidth intensive uh, operation, and here you just, um, you're looking at, you know, different rotated views, and you get it for free. So maximizing the bandwidth in the system. And uh you announcing dual core? Correct. And quad? There will be a quad? No. So, you know, OMAP 5 is in line with the. Uh, do you want me to lift it up? Yeah. So, uh, OMAP 5 is in line with the uh, smart multi core architecture, which yeah. is, you know, our terminology for describing this distributed processing. So, we've got the, the, the dual A15s. We also have dual M4s, yeah. which are there for real-time control, so for video, uh, imaging, other real-time tasks. So offloading the offloading the main processors, saving power on those sorts of use cases. So you know, up to 10% of like a H.264 encode uh, by leveraging those M4s rather than servicing a hardware accelerator with the NA15. Uh, doing similar things with the DSP, with the you know the composition engine. So the right, the right uh, core for the chore is uh, something we've said. And I I don't know if you well I guess you did at the press release the the OMAP five demo which is is also up on the web. You can see how the OMAP five smart multi core has completed a download of twenty um, HTML rich pages in 95 seconds and you can see that this uh, you know commercially available quad core is, is running and taking until 201 seconds to complete is it does, does it help that you are also playing an mp3 file and a, downloading a video file or that that's not why you are so much better so, so it's a it's an important point and it's it's one of our strengths is the ability to to you know handle these large uh, parallel tasks yeah. right and so 
having that memory bandwidth, as well as then the Cortex A15, the uh, efficiency of the operating or of the uh, instruction set allows you to complete the, the large uh, threaded tasks in the browser very quickly. So that's what's maximizing this uh, this user experience. Is the, the most of the browsers on the market are yes multi-threaded, but they're dependent on one or two main threads. And so the efficiency you get beyond two cores diminishes greatly. And that's what you see in this uh, presentation. When you do uh, the, the two Cortex M4s, is that uh, your implementation of the philosophy of Big Little somehow? I, I think you can view it at that. And I, I think uh, you know we've worked with ARM for a long time, and you can see that as an evolution, right? So the 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 M4s are a perfect example of getting uh, these tasks that need to be woken up very often, getting that run on a very power efficient, low power core, and allowing the big cores to shut off, go to sleep, and, and save power. So, yes, it is a very similar concept. So, you announced 800 megahertz. Can it be much faster than that? So we're, we're running the A15 at 800 megahertz today, but uh, we'll be shipping it at 1.7 and 2.0 gigahertz. 1.7, 2.0? Correct. So it means that the performance you were demonstrating over there can be much exceeded? Much exceeded, absolutely. Without using too much power? Without using too much power. That's uh, the, the fundamentally uh, something that uh, you need to understand is with TI's 28 nanometer process, we, we have a, a unique competitive advantage and we'll be able to maximize the performance of a, a dual A15 in our process technology without exceeding uh, you know, the thermal budgets. So we'll, we'll deliver higher effective MIPS than competing uh, solutions in high K metal gate process. But that, so the OMAP 5 does not use more power per megahertz than the OMAP 4? Like a, no, like so the, the um, for instance, I'll, I'll take a, a use case like web browsing. Because you, you have a burst of activity and then you get to sleep, you can save approximately 40% on web browsing power consumption uh, with the A15 versus the, the dual A9. So, so it's clever burst and then go to sleep quickly. Correct. Instantly. Yep. And, and that's part of also, we have our smart reflex technology, which is the next generation of smart reflex, which is the, some of the techniques, such as adaptive voltage scaling, but now we're applying it, for instance, the A15 core, to allow a very rapid transition in and out of uh, retention, and so further saving power uh, versus uh, competitive solutions. So. Would you uh, play back 4, 4K video? Uh, 4K, no, not uh, that, but we do support 1080p60, um, and as well as, you know, for instance, one of the interesting use cases is 720p 120, and doing both image capture and then the slow-mo uh, playback. It, it, it's a pretty cool effect uh, that I think we'll see out in the market. And all the apps just work, that all the apps manage it. We could do new native code to take advantage of this new performance, I guess. Like uh, new yeah, apps, yeah, like even you, you can always, apps. with any processor architecture, you can go off and optimize for it. But uh, you know, I can tell you that we got this up and running ice cream sandwich, you know, within hours of, of having silicon and and having very respectable uh, performances, right? So, so this is definitely high-end devices. Could it be also cheaper, mediums, media? Mi I think, as uh, has been seen many times with our OMAP products, you'll start out uh, fairly high, and uh, you know you'll see it rapidly go across the, the market tiers. So, yeah. and how soon? Before so, the end of the year, or not? So we we're working. There may be some lead customers by end of the year, but solidly one Q thirteen. All right. So,